Hi all, the much eagerly awaited World Chess Championship match has started. So in game one, Magnus Carlsen was playing white, Sergei Karak in black. D4. Magnus opens with d4. Yes, pretty solid. Knight f6 by Karyakin. Hypermodern move. You don't have to necessarily literally occupy the center. So the hypermodernists -modernist, uh, believe that you can just control it. We have bishop g5. This is a surprise move already, the Trompovsky variation. It was used with great effect by British Grandmaster Julian Hodgson. He won the British Championship multiple times with it and uh, wrote uh, a lot of materials about it like books and stuff so he carved it into a great attacking weapon uh, there might be some little joke here Magnus is playing on the rest of the world for Donald Trump of course Trumpovsky Trump but uh, who knows <laughs> so d5 but doesn't mind the double pawns here quite often theoretically knight e4 is played just hitting that bishop uh, but uh, yeah we have d5 not scared of the double pawns e3 Magnus is not too keen immediately to do it it seems c5 now here white places great attention on the d5 square what he does is actually take on f6 now and shows the follow-up is he doesn't want to like play a more passive position with c3 potentially because this might allow queen b6 and black gets quite active there no instead the follow-up is revolving around the d5 square d takes c5 it's the most common follow-up in fact and now knight c6 a little bit of a surprise quite often e6 just to get the pawn back as quickly as possible that's quite common and now we're really going off the beaten tracks of of, of previous games you know from this position after bishop b5 not too many games here so we're going off the beaten tracks e6 c4 nevertheless there's logic in both sides play putting more pressure on the key central light square uh, if white wanted to cling on with to the pawn just in case you're wondering uh, this is a little bit doubtful uh, the undermining possibilities like a5 here and this this will just lead to a nice position for black that loses a pawn and if white takes on c6 uh, well that's giving up the bishop pair this is too much of a price to pay to try and hold on to a pawn and uh, it'll be just be better for black basically so better not to be too materialistic here c4 we have d takes inviting simplification and okay magnus didn't want to take the queens off because here actually it doesn't offer too much black has a great resource here in the form of c3 to fracture the pawns and black would actually stand quite well here this is to be avoided black has that g file the two bishops it's okay and white is not structurally amazing either so taking off the queens probably not a good idea instead we have knight d2 we have bishop takes c5 knight gf3 and both sides castle it is doubtful if black can do anything like rook g8 uh, the rook would just be essentially misplaced here in this kind of position so this is to be reserved for bullet games or blitz games rook g8 uh, so yeah both sides castling now interestingly knight a5 it seems uh a nuisance move making it more difficult to wait to, to take on c4 uh, we have rook c1 clearly if knight takes c4 then black might be tempted to exchange off queens and not only that has a good move here in the form of a6 guaranteeing black a great game actually uh, bishop a4 would lose a piece to knight takes c4 You know, here b5 piece up thank you very much and attacking the bishop and this position is just good for, for black uh if um <clears throat> here knight takes a takes this would be very nice for black black's got 
very good active pieces even though this yes there's double pawns but black's piece activity is pretty good here with bishop e6 to follow so um yeah knight a5 interesting move rook c1 we have bishop e7 getting out of the way also possible here was b6 uh for example knight takes queen takes here this position is actually okay white would have bishop c6 here attacking that rook not bishop a4 well better than bishop a4 but bishop c6 this this sort of scenario here is is about equal uh, so b6 was viable but uh, we have bishop e7 going back queen c2 getting out of the way of queens coming off bishop d7 now man this takes on d7 and actually doesn't play knight takes c4 that's the obvious move but would essentially lead to an equal position he plays actually queen c3 very interesting it sets up possibilities like knight e4 it hits the knight of course pardon me <laughs> it hits the knight um, <clears throat> and it means that knight e4 on f6 is also on the cards um now if let's say knight takes c4 here just to show simplification rook a c8 could unpin but essentially uh this sort of scenario for example is fine for black it seems so we have uh queen c3 yeah keeps a bit of tension and now interestingly okay queen d5 is used to protect the knight on a5 b6 is also possible but uh it does mean that knight e4 is not ruled out and we have knight e4 hitting f6 this scenario uh is a little bit on the interesting side if we go for a hack attack here but uh, with best play i think black is not suffering too much he's not going to be too terrified in this kind of scenario it's going to fizzle out a bit yeah it doesn't seem as though there's enough to justify this sort of attacking strategy on b6 uh but you know queen d5 rules out all this stuff anyway it simply rules out knight e4 it protects the knight it ticks those two boxes protects the knight stops knight e4 uh we have knight takes c4 and indeed simplification structurally of course white's better but is it enough is it enough to try and win from this position and now a pair of rooks come off rook d8 defending indirectly now because rook d1 threatens the classic back row mate so white can't plunge into c7 just yet g3 making some air for his king rook d7 securing the seventh rank king f1 the kings are about to centralize on both sides but f5 here is interesting letting the bishop come to f6 and the pawns go on light squares a common strategy magnus uses against the specific single bishop just put the pawns on the other side of the color complex the other color king f8 centralizing h3 with the possible idea of g4 and although this undoubles the pawns it might provide the potential for a passed pawn at some point but here after h6 the invitation is extended to play g4 but it's not used knight e1 is played instead with possibilities like knight d3 to f4 if g4 it seems maybe black just really just wants to take that off and try and hold this position and it seems fairly holdable there doesn't seem to be a great deal going on here so okay uh in fact so after h6 in fact this is not used knight e1 as though knight d3 and then maybe knight f4 is possible king e7 knight d3 king d8 means that rook c7 exchanging off the last pair of rooks now although the knight is ready to spring to f4 it doesn't use that in fact 
F4 is played. Uh, fixes the E5 square a bit, but does deprive the knight of F4. Uh, if we have knight F4, this isn't of great concern, it seems. Black can carry on with rook C7. And there's an interesting try here in E4, temporary pawn sack, but uh, ultimately, white seems to have only a tiny advantage in any case. So we have f4. The knight isn't finished yet though. h5 secures down against g4 in any case now. a4, a waiting move but slightly more aggressive pawn, still on light squares away from the bishop. Rook d5 introduces b5. Maybe a kind of punishment for a4 in a way. It is, does mean that b5 is a kind of little frat here. Knight c5, counterfratting b7, stopping b5. b6, and the knight plunges into a6. What is going on with this knight? Bishop e7, going back, ready to defend the pawn chain over here. And saying to the knight, you know, watch, <laughs> watch the b4 square. Knight b8, threatening now, knight c6 check to win the a7 pawn. A5, the pawn runs for its life for its life. Check. Now here it seems as though B6 might be fragile in this position, but it doesn't seem as though it's convincing how to actually get to B6. Instead, Magnus, he doesn't take on E7, he plays knight E5. If he takes on E7, there are two ways of trying to get to this B6 pawn. Uh Rook C6 is the direct way, but there's also the slightly more long-winded rook c8 to b8 on rook c6 though black has a great move in the form of king d7 cold shower here because if it takes we go here and then this would be a disaster trapping the rook and this is nothing to write home about here because black just takes and plays king b6 regaining the pawn and if anyone's a tiny bit better it's going to be black so basically this idea of knight takes e7 doesn't really work very well with rook c6 and if we investigate rook c8 instead to go to b8 this position after rook c5 check this rook and pawn ending is also nothing to really be of great concern it seems should be equal so we have knight e5 instead of taking on e7 bishop c5 locks down the rook on that c file shuts the rook down rook c3 we have king coming to e7 rook d3 now magnus is offering a pair of rooks to come off f6 evicting the knight check and both sides are starting to put their kings in the center like an arbiter would uh, to indicate a drawn game uh, knight b5 king c6 check and check and draw agreed Okay, a solid start to this year's World Championship match. Uh, interesting with the Trompovsky though. Magnus has got a sense of humour, perhaps there. I don't know. <laughs> There's been more information on that to follow. But um, yeah, uh, a solid performance from both players. Um, Knight A5 was very, very interesting for Black, just making it difficult for sometimes White to regain the pawn to get any meaningful advantage. So yeah, Magnus in a way was kind of neutralized here in this particular game, it seems. So perhaps a better result slightly for Sergei than, than for Magnus. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. Comments, questions, likes, appreciated. Thanks very much.